Welcome to The Right Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome it any health challenge. That's why we're here every day on the Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your calls on the Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. That's 844-236-6010. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of, any of the Longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, you can check out my websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com. You can order products right off the website, and you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website if you want to start a business, if you are an entrepreneur or entrepreneurially minded, you want to make some money and help change the world and help improve people's lives at the same time, you want to join the Brightside Ben team, call 866-735-2470. They can give you the scoop for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a business or you can sign up off the websites as well, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com. That's criticalhealthnews.com and brightsideben.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. In the book, Einstein and Religion, Physics and Theology by Max Jammer, Albert Einstein said that good science is not separated, it's not different from spirituality. Quote, everyone, this is from Einstein, quote, everyone who is seriously involved in the pursuit of science becomes convinced that a spirit is manifest in the laws of the universe a spirit vastly superior to that of man and one in the face of which we with our modest powers must feel humble unquote i would say infinitesimal powers non-powers must feel humble science and spirituality go hand in hand oftentimes you'll hear people say well he's a scientist he's not very spiritual well a real scientist is going to be spiritual a real biologist is going to be spiritual because biology is too incredibly complex, incredibly nuanced and subtle, incredibly detailed, incredibly organized and choreographed and regulated far too, uh, far too comprehensively for anything but magic and woo-woo and miracle and the world of spirituality to be involved. It has to be involved. And anybody who understands anything about science will acknowledge that. This is one of the biggest problems we have with, our, with modern medicine, is it has separated itself from the spiritual. It has separated itself from the miraculous. It considers the, the spiritual miraculous to be, uh, to be qu a quackery. When even electricity itself is too incredibly miraculous to be understood by scientists. Nobody even really understands what electricity is, and certainly the body is a bioelectrical system, and this is where we come to the connective tissue, which we've been spending a lot of time talking about, and for good reason. Aging is largely a connective tissue problem. Disease is largely a connective tissue problem. Inflammation, a chronic breakdown in the body is largely a connective tissue problem. If we're truly serious about a health show, if we're truly serious about educating about health, all we'll talk about is the connective tissue. Well, not all, but most of what we'll talk about is the connective tissue, which makes up 
about one third or so of our bodies. So the largest, by far, the largest component of the body is the connective tissue, at least in terms of the tissues. And when it comes to the spiritual or miraculous or electromagnetic or quantum or how, whatever term you want to use, nature of the body, you can't, you can't avoid talking about the connective tissue. When it comes to aging, health, wellness, and understanding the spiritual nature of biology and health, it's about the connective tissue, which is an information storage system, a type of brain. And understanding the connective tissue can help us understand the logic and science of many aspects of what's called mind-body medicine or energy medicine or, or woo-woo medicine. I know I'm coming at you from Boulder, Colorado. I understand. Ben's gone crazy. Alternative medicine, hippie talk. No, this is hardcore science. On our last program, we talked about the relationship between acupuncture and the connective tissue. Acupuncture, which for for decades was thought to be some kind of was thought to be some kind of pseudoscience, it still is by a lot of mainstream folks. Acupuncture works by creating changes in electrical currents that flow through the connective tissue. What are called the acupuncture meridians are lines of energy that contain the points that acupuncture needles are inserted to, and this is about the connective tissue. The acupuncture meridians and the points are all part of the connective tissue. According to a June 2010 article in the Journal of Chinese Medicine, quote, there is evidence to support the anatomical reality of acupuncture channels and their association with connective tissue, unquote. In the May 2013 edition of the journal The Scientist, Dr. Helen Langevin, director of the Osher Center for Integrative Medicine at Harvard Medical School, Harvard, that is, not airy-fairy by any stretch, certainly no friends of airy-fairy. Dr. Helen Langevin says, quote, the mysterious acupuncture meridians defined as lines connecting acupuncture points also may be related to connective tissue as they seem to be preferentially located along connective tissue planes between muscles or between muscle, muscle and bone. We have found that more than 80% of acupuncture points in the arm are located along connective tissue planes, unquote. From the April 2000 edition of Journal of Complementary Medicine, we learned from experiments on mice, quote, that subtle differences in acupuncture needle manipulation can affect cellular responses in connective tissue, unquote. December 2002, the anatomical record, quote, acupuncture points may, be, may correspond to sites of convergence in a network of connective tissue permeating the entire body, unquote. And this weird, woo-woo, spiritual nature of connective tissue gets even more strange than acupuncture, which, by the way, acupuncture is no longer considered, well, by a lot of folks, it's no longer considered to be quackery. It's become uh, somewhat mainstream. There's, there's even insurance companies that will pay for acupuncture. The connective tissue is a highly electrical system that generates a field, an invisible field around the body. More Einstein. It is the field that governs the particle. This is from Albert Einstein. He said it's about the field. The field tells the pieces what to do. What is the field? The field is this invisible energy that coats everything, every li living thing, and probably even non-living things, emit a field of energy. The human body emits a tremendous, relatively tremendous field of energy. And this electrical field is generated by the connective tissue. Are you guys getting the sense that this is important stuff? The, uh, the uh, electromagnetic field that surrounds the body is initiated by the nerves, by the nervous system, but it's stored and radiated out of the connective tissue in a tiny but very measurable fashion. Although, uh, in fairness, it's only been recently that we could accu accurately detect it. We could actually, actually see it in, with machines. They actually can see light coming off of the body. Do you know... Every cell of the body emits something called biophotons. And every living cell, a cucumber cell, will emit biophotons. Yes, it emits light. The cells emit light. We are light emitters. That's what the aura is. More woo woo. Think the aura is woo woo? No, it's not. It's biophotonic energy. Hardcore science, folks. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll take a break and come back with more good health information right after this. Okay, we are back on The 
the bright side. Got lines open for you at 844-236-6010. I am Farm Suspend. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time. Talking, uh, well, talking common sense about nutrition, but sometimes, uh, I guess lately we've been talking about the invisible, not so intuitive aspects of understanding health. And really, that is what is primal. I love talking about nutrition. Make no mistake about it. I am a chemist at heart. But do you know even chemistry is based in quantum physics? Chemistry, the chemistry of nutrition, vitamins. Vitamins work, and for that matter, matter minerals as well and essential fatty acids, the essential nutrients, the micronutrients. They're chemicals, but they work electromagnetically. That's how a vitamin works. It is so amazingly cool how vitamins and micronutrients work. But you got to understand a little bit about how the quantum nature of the body. Don't worry about it. We're not going to talk about that. But just so you know, chemistry is secondary to electromagnetics. Electromagnetics is primal. But because electromagnetics is invisible, we think it's silly. Not we uh, listening to the show. But the mainstream thinks it's silly because it's invisible, yet we use electromagnetics everywhere. We use electromagnetics in health everywhere. PET scans and CAT scans and MRIs, they're all electromagnetics. We use quantum physics in our day-to-day in uh, our day-to-day uh, medical model and our many of our day-to-day medical protocols are electromagnetic in nature. PET scans. You know what a PET scan is? It's ridiculous. It uses antimatter. Yeah, like Star Wars or like Star Trek, antimatter. Positron uh, electro topography or tomography. Positron emission tomography. Positrons are antimatter, as woo as that sounds. I'm not going to get too much into that, but I just want you to know that it's not crazy. To th- energy medicine is not weird and crazy and wild eyed and hippie talk. It's hardcore science. And any doctor that thinks it's, oh, well, there's no studies and, you know, that's just uh, 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 pseudoscience. That's what they like to say, pseudoscience. It's not pseudoscience. The pseudoscience of today is the hardcore science of tomorrow. We see this stuff everywhere in nature. And vitamins and nutrients, as important as they are, are secondary to electromagnetics. They work with electromagnetics, with quantum, invisible electromagnetics. And this strange idea of the new physics, they call it the new physics, it's hardly the new physics, has yet to take root in, uh, in the mainstream, even though it's not new, it's 100 years old. It includes things like non-locality, which says you can turn a screw uh, on one side of the universe and create a change on the other side of the universe. That's basically non-locality. And that's not airy-fairy either, and that's not theoretical either. That's been reproduced. Once two particles are connected, they are permanently connected. Once they touch each other, they're permanently related, even if they're on the other side of the friggin' universe. That's remote healing. That is the basis for remote healing. For remote anything. They call it non-locality. Unified fields and zero-point fields and the photon effect. Light turns into electricity and electricity turns into light. That's called the photon effect. Light turns into electricity. Electricity turns into light. They go back and forth. Light is electricity in essence, and energy is matter in essence. That's E equals MC squared. I know we're talking nutrition, we're talking health, but if we're really serious about health, we got to really understand all this stuff. Or not understand it, but at least understand that there is all this stuff. Maybe maybe not understand it, because nobody really understands it, but understands that there's this invisible aspect of our bodies that needs to be addressed. Nutrition is one way, but once you understand this, you can see the power of thought, and the power of emotion, and the power of feeling. All of these work at the quantum level. Even vision works at the quantum level. Smell works at the quantum level. Is this, all this stuff is called quantum biology, by the way, and it is a up-and-coming science. Quantum biology. It's all over. So quantum biology is how birds know how to migrate or how whales or, or dolphins know how to migrate across large air, large, uh, uh, mile, uh, probably thousands upon thousands of miles. Whales can migrate and sharks can migrate and birds can migrate. How do they know how to do this? Quantum magnetism. Photosynthesis is quantum. The heart, we've been talking about the heart. The heart is no less a quantum electrical system than any other part of the body. The heart beats in a rhythm. 
And this heartbeat, this heart rhythm conducts or, or initiates electrical energies. And this electrical energy is carried through the connective tissue. The heart has its own connective tissue. They call it the cardiac skeleton. And this cardiac skeleton is extremely, extremely underappreciated when it comes to heart disease. Because we're all obsessed with cholesterol. This idiocy, absolute stupidity of the cholesterol hypothesis in the light of the quantum nature of the heart, the, the cardiac skeleton is so asinine when you when you see the the heart as this subtle electromagnetic system whose electromagnetics uh, depends on on structure like the car, uh, the connective tissue in the heart you can see how absolutely idiotic using a statin drug is to deal with heart disease idiotic or at least counting on a statin drug to do your business the heart beats the heartbeat itself is uh, is an electromagnetic phenomena. It's synchronized. The heartbeat synchronizes the chemistry of the body. The heartbeat coordinates the biochemistry of the body. The electromagnetic rhythm of the heart coordinates everything in the heart. In fact, there's evidence that, uh, that indicates that the electromagnetic energy of the heart, which is, quantum, uh, which is a quantum phenomena, informs the brain of what's happening in the body via the connective tissue. The heart is the brain's brain. There's, this, is, this is a very recent, recent findings, recent discovery that the heart tells the brain what's happening via electromagnetics and then the brain coordinates the physical response. In other words, the heart is the brain's brain via this connective tissue and electromagnetic phenomena. Now, heart disease is a leading cause of death. It is the leading cause of death in this country and around the world. And it could very well be primarily an electromagnetic phenomenon mediated through connective tissue. I would say that is what it is. I don't see how it could be any different. Now, there are nutritional strategies you can use for your heart, absolutely, but don't underestimate the mental and emotional strategies, the woo-woo strategies, the invisible strategies of dealing with heart disease. From a biochemical perspective, when we do things like take supplements, we actually control, the. that's how we control, that's one of the ways we control our quantum nature, is all of the things we talk about uh, with supplementation, activating the relaxation nervous system. Last program, we talked about the top strategies for dealing with heart disease, activate the relaxation process with breathing, another quantum phenomena. Oxygenation is all about quanta. Slow, deep breathing. Eliminating foods that spike sugar, which disturb quantum phenomena. This is the problem with sugar. It disturbs the highly, highly coordinated and regulated and subtle electrical energy of the body. Sugar disturbs it in a big, big way. Eat only what you need to. Food disturbs the quantum nature of the body as well. That's why the longer, uh, the less food you eat, the longer you live. Leverage the power of cartilage and bone broth protein and bone soup. Use our, uh, uh, micronutrients like arginine, taurine, selenium, zinc, magnesium, calcium, vitamin C, the B complex, which is pff, uber electrical. That's how the B complex works. And then the coenzyme Q10. I wanted to talk about CoQ10 today. Tomorrow we'll talk about CoQ10, which is derived from that supposed bad guy that you'll take a statin drug to re reduce the amounts of cholesterol. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. All right, we are back on The Bright Side. Pharmacist Ben here. We got lines open at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or my Truth Skin Health products, by the way, true skin health products work by stimulating the production of connective tissue. As uh, I've said before, connective tissue is not just important for our health, it's important for our beauty as well, for our appearance as well. And if you're interested in anti-aging skincare, you better be interested in building connective tissue and people who have connective tissue diseases and people who have connective tissue problems, they're not generating connective tissue, they're breaking it down, we'll have wrinkles skin. Fine lines and wrinkles are about the connective tissue. If your anti-aging program, your anti-aging products, your anti-aging health strategies do not include vitamin A and vitamin C, you are missing the boat, especially topically. 
Lots of vitamin A, lots of vitamin C, at least regular vitamin A, and I'm not talking about the kind you get at the department store. I'm talking about retinol. And you need a lot of it. You need a big old dose of retinol, and you're not going to find that big old dose of retinol anywhere except at truthtreatments.com. 5% retinol along with vitamin C. Our Truth Retinol Gel, our Truth Retinol 5% Gel is made with a big old dose of vitamin C. Vitamin A and vitamin C are the only two ingredients that have been shown repeatedly, repeatedly in vivo, that means in real life, to jack up vitamin C, or jack up connective tissue, to increase the production of connective tissue when applied topically. If your skin health products, skincare products, are not featuring large amounts of vitamin C in its fat-soluble form and large amounts of retinol, you are missing the boat and your skincare products are not doing you any service. And that's one of the major reasons why people have a medicine cabinet filled with wrinkle creams that don't work. TruthTreatments.com. Check out all our Truth Treatment products. And if you have questions about the Truth Treatment products or comments or questions about the longevity products or anything we're talking about here today, 844-236-6010 is our number. From the European Heart Journal, heart disease, high blood pressure, and diabetes may contribute to worsening thinking skills. Well, no kidding. That's because the brain is dependent on the heart, as we said earlier, and the brain is dependent on the circulatory system. So so how much of what we call dementia is really based in thick, dirty blood? Mm, I think a lot. After the blood gets thick and dirty and poorly oxygenated tissue, especially connective tissue in the brain, becomes damaged, plaques start to form, and your doctor will want you to have a vaccine against plaques, or he'll say there's nothing we could do about Alzheimer's disease. Highlights, once again, the absolute inanity and impotence of our modern medical model. Migraine's more likely for people with celiac disease. Surprise, surprise. How do you like that? Uh, let's see here. According, This is from the Neurological Institute of Columbia University Medical Center in New York City. We found significantly higher prevalence of headaches in patients with celiac disease compared to those without it because it all begins in the gut. So if you do have uh, migraine headaches, you may not have celiac disease. You, you probably have some degree of gluten intolerance for sure, but you may just have uh, malabsorption issues or you may have leaky gut syndrome issues which is why everybody with migraines needs to figure out what's going on in the digestive system first, as anybody with any health challenge. Another article here, uh, this one, uh, this is really cool. Microparticles as regulators of inflammation. We'll talk about that here, and maybe we'll talk about that tomorrow, because this is really interesting. Microparticles come in from where do you think? The digestive system, and they regulate and they control the inflammatory process. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010. Mike in... uh, I know we are, Mike, but you're on the phone. What's going on, Mike? How you doing? Uh, fine. Uh, I'm the same guy I talked to you last week about my granddaughter. Um, oh, the your granddaughter was uh, was nauseous or yeah, she got uh, diarrhea. Diarrhea. Um, I told I you start, to work with the mom. Um, I said work with mom. Yeah. Did you write me by the way? Did you send me a note? Yeah, I, I was going to check. Was uh, Ben at KSCO correct? Yeah, Ben at KSCO.com. I get, I get quite yeah, a bit of email, I, so I, I, it might have just gotten... Yeah, I emailed you. I didn't hear anything. All right, well, anyway, so she's three months old. She's had diarrhea all her life. And um, That's horrible. mom's been That's on terrible. an el- elimination diet for two months. And uh, her re- results were that... Uh, um, uh, let's see now... Um, uh, I don't know. She basically okay. had food. Pro- she had food problems. Mom has food problems, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Mom needs to correct food problems. That's the key, the key right. here. Well, All right. Now, elimination do. diet. You don't have, you know, you want to get cut to the chase here. Okay. Eliminate. Yeah. I, usually, I say do this, you know, systematically. But the baby's feeding now. The baby's, the baby's being malnourished every day that this is occurring. All right. right? So this is not. T- you don't have time to fool around here. All right. Yeah. Gluten. I'll tell you what I would do is eliminate dairy entirely. Eliminate eggs. Eliminate gluten. Eliminate peanuts. Eliminate any legumes that includes soy and peanuts and beans, and then see what happens. Usually, I would say do this systematically. But in your case, not. In your case, let's just. Cut to the chase here, because one of those foods, if not all of them, are going to be problematic. You with me? Yeah. Are you with yeah. me? Get her on the bone broth protein, which is a, for folks who have protein problems with whey uh, protein, egg protein, or or whey protein. The bone broth protein is remarkably easy to tolerate. You can find out. Okay, you can good. get it at BrightSideHealth.com. 
uh, a bone broth protein and bone broth in general. Have her doing lots of chicken soup. Okay. Make sure okay. she's on the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. She might want a little extra fish oil if she can handle it. Make sure she's using okay. 50. That's five zero milligrams of zinc picolinate every day. Make sure mom is using iodorol iodine every day. Zinc and iodine in particular are important for baby development. So it's as absolutely must that she's supplementing with those extra. And then I would probably be taking some vitamin A, 20,000 IU of vitamin A a day if I were mom. And, and, uh, uh, vitamin A. And vitamin A. And then uh, uh -huh. probiotics, the best pro and fermented food. Probiotics and fermented food and vegetable juice. That should take care of mom's digestive problems. Mm. I, I don't know for sure. There may be something in spinach that she's having a problem with. But that's a, yeah. that's a good start for you. Okay, make sure she's paying yeah. close attention to refined sugar and fruit sugars. <laughs> they can cause gas and bloating right. and throw off bacteria, yeah. and that can be a problem yeah. too. Yeah, she's... Dr uh, she's been really working hard at this. Good. Uh, you well, know, uh, you know, I don't. You know what? Here's the thing, Mike. Diets, but, here's the thing, Mike. Um, you don't have time to work hard, and you don't have time to try. And you, you know what oh, I'm yeah, saying? Well, every day, yeah. every day, baby is losing stuff. Every day, baby's development yeah. is being affected. All yeah. right. Well, well, that's why we're calling you. <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, good deal. I hope yeah. I helped you. Uh, uh, one other thing. Um, uh, when does when does this show replayed, or how can I get? Is it? When it's is, go to benfuchsarchives dot com, or go oh, to sure. uh, okay. or yeah, go yeah. to brightsideben dot com, and there's tons of archives. And there's uh, my friend Kevin is posting them on my Facebook page. I don't know. Kevin's probably listening. Uh, you know, shoot me an email, Kevin. Tell me how to what's the best way to get. I, I don't know how Facebook works, to tell you the truth, if you can have access to that I don't or either. Not. Um, yeah. I don't really so that, just but... go to archives dot com. All right? Okay. Or, or brightsideben.com. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate your call, man. I hope I helped you. All right. Cindy in Santa Cruz, welcome to the Bright Side. Good morning. Good morning, Ben. How are you? Happy uh, holidays. Happy holidays to you. What's going on? So whenever I take a calcium um, drink, the liquid. Yeah. Which is called OsteoFX. Yes. Or other, I get headaches. Uh, you're cutting out a little bit, Cindy. I heard you say when you take the OsteoFX and other supplements, you get headaches? When I take the calcium supplement, I get calcium headaches. Calcium supplements. Okay, hang on. We've got to take a break, so don't go away, and we'll, I'll answer that when we come back. Okay, so don't go away. And I will try to finish up all our calls here as well, so hang on. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side, 844-236-6010, finishing up here, Cindy. Are you there, Cindy? Cindy? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? You know, you're cutting out a little bit there. I heard you say <laughs> calcium and uh, uh, headaches. Every time you take a calcium yeah. supplement? Yeah, when I take the Osteo FX yeah. or the Ultimate Calcium. Oh, okay, yeah, well, that's morning, not calcium, I... Cindy. Cindy, sweetheart, that's not calcium, okay? Those are calcium-containing products. You hear okay. the distinction? You understand the distinction? Yeah. Calcium is an yeah. essential nutrient. You're not going to get a headache from calcium. Calcium is, is the body's most, arguably, the body's most important mineral, probably the most abundant one. I think it's the most abundant. It's right up near the top. Anyway, so you're not going to have a problem with calcium. You may have a problem okay. with something that's in the drink, and I can't tell you that. Yeah. Uh, okay. The only way to do that is if is it happened repeatedly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, then um, you know that's how you do an experiment. You you repeat it. Now uh, you may want to do a controlled experiment where you're not doing anything else during the day except the calcium, because it may be some kind of interaction, or it may be something else that you think is the drink, but it's something else you're doing. And there's no way to answer that. You just got to keep experimenting. But if you keep experimenting and you keep saying, and it is the drink, definitely, like don't eat all day except just have the drink, so you don't know, you don't interfere with the results. If it does happen that way. Then uh, uh, even if you don't eat all day, and you just do the osteo effects, then there's something in there and there's no way to know. I, I haven't heard that before, but there's no way to know. So you'll have to uh, just other, do ex experiment. Longevity what other calcium? With yeah, what other tons calcium of, with longevity? Uh, tons of products. A lot of the Beyond Tangy Tangerine is calcium in it. I Keep, do that every day, yeah. Yeah, there, but you I know, want more calcium, calcium. Get your calcium from cabbage and spinach if you can't do it from the OsteoFX. There's probably other. I, I have to confess, I don't know what other products have the calcium in it, but they probably do. Call, call Longevity, and they'll tell you. Okay. 
All right, All right Cindy. You. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. All right, let's go to California. O-N in California. Good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side. Hi, Ben. Hi, Hi O-N. Oh. Is that how you say your name? O-N? Is that oh, correct? Oh, right. On. 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 Chin, but, uh, I've talked to you before, On, right? Yeah. You're, in Sa- mm-hmm. you're in Santa Cruz, right? Uh, Salinas, actually. Salinas. Okay, good. What's going on? Okay, What's going I on, like, On? I have sticky, uh, bubbly, very bubbly saliva. And even uh-huh. my eyes feel sticky. Okay, well, that's a sign. Of, that's a very likely a sign of something. Usually, a bubbly saliva. Do you have dry mouth issues? Um. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. That's usually a sign that something's going on, my dear. Um. And so you have more than that. That's just a symptom. You have much. You got to have more than that. That doesn't just randomly occur. So it could be autoimmunity. A Sjogren syndrome, for example, is associated with that. It's called c- uh, Cialuria is the technical name for what you're describing. Cialuria, that's bubbly, foamy kind of urine, uh, uh, a saliva. I thought and maybe could, I wasn't drinking enough water. Could be. It could have something to do with that. Absolutely. It could have something and to do with I, dry. I was, uh, I was told that I have hypothyroidism. Ah, yeah, yeah. It? That's what I'm saying. It, it's, that's part of a picture, um, Cialuria or foamy, foamy, bubbly uh uh, saliva and it's a really important question because what that tells you on is there's nothing you could do about your saliva all right you're not going to be able to do anything about your saliva directly but what you can do is start to correct your other health issues now if you're hypothyroid listen now we're going to work backwards here all right so you you go to the doctor you go to the pharmacist on the radio and you say i got i got bubbly foam, foamy saliva so let's work backwards now this is how you're supposed to do health okay well there's other things going on what else oh i'm hypothyroid okay that could have something to do with it because hypothyroidism is associated with all health challenges then we work backwards from there hypothyroidism is connected to the di- or the thyroid and the function of the thyroid is connected to the digestive system so on what's going on with your belly your intestine that's the first thing i'd be working with food diary elimination diet probiotics you got to have some long standing digestive issues for all this to be occurring yeah i did have but i had i take nightly uh, essence every day Okay, but I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm trying to make a point here. That's good. Keep taking it, but you still have other things you got to work on. But the point I'm making is this is where the problem is. If you say, "Oh, to the doctor, oh, I got bubbly saliva," he's not going to know what to do. Nobody's going to know what to really? do. Really, I know that. But now you start to work backwards, and now you got some power here. So yes, it's great that you're doing the nightly essence, but there's still problems. With all due respect, I'm not I'm not being mean. I'm just uh-huh. I'm just kind of telling you that you got some stuff you got to work on. So food diary elimination diet, first and foremost, on you have to do this. With all due respect, again, you don't have a big window here. You know, you got to do this today. So start doing the food diary and the elimination diet. The nightly essence is great. I hope you're taking nine a day. Also do the Fucoid Z. Also do fermented foods and vegetable juices. Lots of veggie juices for a couple of reasons, for a few reasons. Number one, the fiber in the veggie juice will keep you regular, and that's very important. Hypothyroidism is, uh, equals constipation, and constipation equals hypothyroidism. They go together. So making sure you're regular is going to be very, very important. So uh, the fiber in the veggies will help there. The fiber, the uh, nitrogen in the veggies will help your digestive tract. And then if you do fermented veggies, you'll get the benefit of the bacteria. If you do veggie juices, do a little apple cider vinegar, uh, if not in the veggie juice, with the veggie juice. Apple cider vinegar and uh, and uh, the, the gut and gut bacteria all work together, so that can be helpful for you. And then also make sure you're using your ultimate enzymes and apple cider, vin- uh, apple cider vinegar and your ultimate enzymes with all your meals as well. You see how we're working on the digestive system. You go to the doctor or you go to the healthcare professional or the pharmacist on the radio for a saliva problem, we work back to the digestive system. Make sure you're relaxing the body as much as possible. Don't forget that and keep your blood sugar stable. And I know I say this all the time, but this is the foundation of health, you guys. It's not about a magic formula. It's about working backwards to the building block, the building blocks, the fundamental primal constituents of the body and of health as well. Thank you, Ann. I'm going to move on here. I want to get a couple more calls. Have a great day. Okay, bye-bye. Bob in Minneapolis. Good morning. What's going on? Good morning, Ben. Hey, as uh, far as intestinal uh, absorption, you know, now now today with a more informed healthcare uh, or health conscious uh, consumer, and yeah. I would say I would say uh, if not solely, primarily because of Ben Fook, um, <laughs> uh, 
Do you find that the new that there's a new marketing technique out there in the healthcare uh, with regards to individual vitamins and minerals, such oh. that such that they uh, tout the fact that these minerals and vitamins are large molecules, and thus you need to buy our product to absorb it more appropriately in your intestine. Are you? Can you debunk that in any way, or are at you, least identify, no, what, or at least identify what, minerals and, and vitamins that truly are large absorb. to be absorbed? Okay, so what you're saying is you're hearing a lot of a lot of uh, buzz about stuff being too big to absorb, and and yeah, there's like marketing. It, it, it there's marketing now that's market leveraging. That mar- it's a marketing technique that's leveraging the fact that there may be absorption issues with so- related to size of the size of the particles. Is that correct? Yeah. Last last, last week you had a call about vitamin C in that regard. I've Liposomes. Also heard it with, yep, and I've also yeah. heard it with in regard to B12 as well as. Uh, uh, those are all wonderful questions. Now here's the issue: it's much more than size. First of all, that has to do with absorption. There's there's a few points you're bringing up here. Number one, absorption is there's two kinds of absorption. There's absorption into the blood through the intestine. That's A, absorption version A. And there's, then there's absorption into the cells, absorption version B. All right, so there's two, two sites of absorption. So when anybody talks about absorption, if they're just throwing that word out, they may not be clear on the distinction between absorption into the blood versus absor- absorption into the cells. Are you with me so far? Yep. So there's two levels of the absorption. There's the absorption into the system per se, that is the bloodstream, and then into the literal cells. All right. Now there are uh, the, the, at the level of the cell. Yes, they have the particles have to be tiny, but if they are already digested and they're elemental, many of them will be. That's exactly what they'll be. They'll be tiny enough to get into the cell. At the level of the intestine, it's a little bit different, in the sense that. The intestine has a particular type of of size and a particular form of mineral or vitamin that it prefers over other forms. For example, if there's uh, if you have a if you have a, a, an intestinal issue like Crohn's disease or celiac disease, you may not be able to absorb fats and fatty vitamins as effectively. If you have damage to the intestine, damage is really where that occurs. Uh, sometimes food par- foods will have uh, anti nutrients in them, like phytates, which can prevent the fo- uh, the uh, the absorption across the intestinal wall into the blood of certain nutrients, like minerals. You know what? This is kind of a complicated subject, and I'm just out of time here, Bob. But long story short, if you're doing foods and your digestive system is working correctly, uh, and you're supplementing, it's unlikely that you're going to have a nutritional deficiency that's based on particle size. Unless you unless you have damage to the intestine from Crohn's or celiac disease, I wouldn't waste my money uh, on any of that stuff. Although at the end of the day, it's really hard to know exactly what's being absorbed. You're going to have to ultimately go by your symptomology. I hope that's not too vague for you, Bob. And I'm um, flat out of time. So thanks yep. for call. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, take care, man. I appreciate it. Yep. Thank All you. Right. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side, 844-236. I'm sorry, uh, 866-735-2470 is the phone number for The Bright Side Ben team. Please join us in our mission to educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have an awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. 